here we go, guys. Oh my and I'm feeling kind of rich over there. With and I'm making up stuff. I'm ignorant to this. I don't know what I'm saying. Oh, not Nike either. My bad. Really? Oh, are you recording? Yeah, it's recording. Okay. What's going on YouTube? I am delighted today to bring you guys a review of the best camera purchase I've ever had in the 15 years I've been trying to possibly view photography. Quite possibly the best piece of video camera gear I've ever bought, period. And I get to enjoy it with my wife. And I appreciate you guys and, uh, watching my wife's intro. She's prettier than me anyway, so. Guys, I don't know how to tell you this, but I love this camera. It is probably the best mix of video and photography and uh, blend that I've ever, ever, ever had. I've, I mean, you can, I have a Olympus EM5 back there. It's really dope, the Micro Four Thirds, but it it has great auto focus. It has great video. It has great photography too, but nothing really beats this Nikon Z6. And, and, and hopefully you guys can bear with me. I want to tell you kind of what I liked about it and review it a little bit today. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe influence you guys to maybe purchase it, rent it, check it out. But it, it's a really dope camera. So let's talk about some of the, the things that uh, I like about it with a lot. Um, and I mean a lot. Only a, a couple of cons, but, but trust me, it is well worth it. So I bought the, the lens kit um, for the 24 to 70 kit. Um, you pretty much have to get it that way because otherwise, uh, right now the FZ adapter is essentially not available. So um, you pretty much have to get it with the 24 to 70, which adds additional money to the body. Um, but still, it, it, was, it was worth it. The 24 to 70 F4 uh, S line um, lens is, is, is extremely sharp. Um, a little bit lightweight, lighter than the 24 to 70 F2.8, F but still well worth it. One of the biggest things that I love about the camera is that now I've had a Nikon 2XS, a Nikon 2HS, I think that's the lettering for it. I had a Nikon D1, I had a Nikon D80, I had a, I have a Nikon D4 right now. Yeah, I cannot tell you or stress enough, having a light camera that actually works is awesome. Uh, and it, it's just a really good camera. I can't stress you how good this camera is. The, the really good thing about this camera is, and I know a lot of people have really kind of been hating on this camera a little bit about the autofocus, but guys, let me tell you something. If you have good light, um, like I'm using a uh, Savage uh, ring right here to do this video, it's gonna autofocus perfectly. I have my set right now on autofocus F, which is the mode that you can use, um, which is their equivalent to the 3D mode that the D4 had, um, or the Nikon D4 had, um, and I have it on autofocus area, and it picks up focus immediately. I'm using a Icon, Icon monitor right now, five inch, that I'm gonna re do a review on as well. And it's, 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 it's awesome. Now if it's really dark, every camera is gonna have uh, a difficult time in in low light. So the next thing to have on my list, uh, one of the pros of it is that the video is awesome. And the ProRes RAW feature that they've come out with 
uh, with the Atomos Ninja 5 um, recorder monitor is dope. Now, obviously, I'm an amateur. I don't really care that it's 8-bit or 10-bit, but for the, you guys who are really, really into uh, 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 video and really want to color grade and really do a lot of tweaking to your videos, the 10-bit feature is going to be awesome. Uh, then you're going to be able to record um, for an extended period of time uh, with the monitor instead of using the sensor on the Nikon Z6 itself. Now, I got the camera for the picture quality and for video because I was tired of the autofocusing system with the previous Nikon cameras. The picture quality is dope. I'm going to put a picture up here in just a minute and show you how crisp and clear and sharp this camera is in quality is so 24 megapixels and the S line 24 to 70 S lens is extremely sharp to me it is anyway but honestly it is extremely dope um, and I'll put a couple pictures up so you guys can see as well now some of the good things about the camera it has touch screen autofocus which nothing before this has had it I thought it was just a gimmick I've enjoyed using it, it um, I've had my kids playing in the park using the autofocus. It is extremely dope. And the menu system is also extremely easy to navigate. Now I'm not gonna guy, so the menu is pretty similar to what we were used to before. So that goes without saying that um, it was pretty easy for me to, uh, to grasp the concept of it. Um, and it's just, it's just been a, a joy to use. Another thing about the camera that I really, really enjoy is the electronic viewfinder. Guys, I have never seen an electronic viewfinder this clear um, or a, 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 a LCD screen in the back that behind the camera that's this clear. It is extremely, extremely clear. A joy to use. I love it. Um, and the thing is, is um, if you guys do flash photography, and we'll talk about this in the comments, but the pro about it, about this camera, the well, positive thing about the, using flash photography or off camera flash is that the screen will brighten when you put a uh, flash trigger or flash on it. Another good, another good thing about this camera is that the EVF is extremely, or well, electronic viewfinder, EVF is extremely bright, very sharp. You can set it to where it will come on automatically and automatically switch between the monitor and the EVF. Or you can just have where the EVF is active or the LCD is active. In all honesty, I left mine on automatic switch. Sometimes it is a problem, especially if I have a strap, but you won't have a problem with it. And another thing I like about it is that when you use a flash trigger, it will actually brighten up and show you what the exposure is going to look like before. So it has been great um, working with the camera, uh, especially with flash triggers. A whole lot different than working with an optical viewfinder uh, with flash triggers before. So another thing that's good about this camera that's coming up in a new update, and I should have said this before too, but the update that's coming out will be eye autofocus. And that is going to be a game changer. That's going to make it very difficult to go to to another brand like Sony. Um, they already have eye autofocus and or eye autofocus, and they're good cameras. Don't get me wrong, but the Nikon I'm used to it. So with that feature, it's just going to make it even much better, even that much better. So. So if you guys are looking for that feature, it's coming up soon. Also, the ProRes feature that will work with the Atmos Ninja 5 recorder monitors is going to be in a future update as well. This camera does have a few cons. It really, really does. And I'll go through them right now. Number one, the battery life sucks. My D4 can go all day. This camera will only last about three to four hundred different um, 
3400 uh, photos. Um, I don't know why, and they apparently are only going to have a fatter grip later, which will help. But we're probably going to have to pay more money. Well, I'm sure we're going to have to pay more money. And it's supposedly only going to function as a, a battery grip. You can't have no other functionality. Hopefully, it's not going to change that. But we'll see. Um, another con about this camera the lens prices are just to me not low enough. That may sound kind of petty, but I just don't uh, feel like I'm getting my money's worth with a lens. Okay, the 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 1.8 is around 600 bucks. It, I've tried it, I've looked at it, I felt that it does not feel worth it. The 85 millimeter, I'm sorry, the 35 millimeter, just doesn't feel worth it. The, I, I mean, I, I have a, the Sigma 1.4 Sigma Art lens, 105 millimeter lens. It feels like the money I spent on it. Another kind of this video. Another kind of this camera is the fact that it uses XQD cars. Now that may not be a problem for some people, but for me it is. It's, those cars are expensive, very expensive. Now in a future update, it's supposed to be compatible with the CF Express um, uh, Compact Flash Express cars that are coming out. I can't wait. Hopefully they're cheaper at least a little bit um, because paying 64 gig or, or paying for 64 gig car paying almost 150 bucks is not funny at all. But that's pretty much all the comments that I had. I mean, you got some leave some comments in the bottom. If you have some other ideas or some pros or some more cons for this lens. But honestly guys, I love this camera and I'm actually using it right now. Please hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button please if you like it. Let me know if any other ideas you um, would like to give me some positive criticism. Um, and let me know. I'll do some more reviews. I'm probably going to put a couple more out this week. So, um, alright. I will see you guys later.